Welcome back to Crypto's Juiciest News, baby dolls. The most breaking news of all is that Uncle Joey Biden is now no longer the presidential nominee. He has officially dropped out, and there are some funny things with this simulation, friends. Boy, oh boy, wait till you see this. Now, if you go and check out on Grok, which is the Twitter AI, you ask it what day it is today, and it will tell you it is National Ice Cream Day. And what's most funny is Joey Biden has had this famous picture of him eating this ice cream. I mean, like, you can't even make this up. Are you serious? He literally, he drops out on National Ice Cream Day. I mean, what a meme. What the hell is going on? I don't know. Deep State, aliens, simulation. You can't make this up. You literally can't make this up. You're telling me this guy drops out on National Ice Cream Day, really? After all the memes... That picture, we had the thumbnails, friends, really. It's wonderful. Now, in honor of Uncle Sleepy Joe, I have this Snorlax hat because we're going to see what the Bitcoin price did, friends. You know, on his actual dropout, I don't, dude, I don't know who the hell's trading this, but people actually sold it down. People actually started selling it. <laughs> They're like, oh no, he drops out and set it down. And then the real move comes up. Bitcoin goes up and hits $68,000 ago, put it back up to a higher time frame chart just so we can get an idea of where we're going. Hopefully, we do continue around this range. It would be nice if we do complete the prophecy of around mid-August just to show that everybody is on track. And I really do mean almost everybody, friends, because we're going to play some nice pump music. You know who needs it, though? Ethereum. Because Ethereum, friends, the ETH BTC ratio is still 0.051 now. Now, here's the thing. I've left... I've left the emoji for ETH. I've left, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. You see this blue emoji? I'm not, it should be a clown emoji again, or a poopy emoji. It really should be, but I'm leaving it as blue. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm, I'm going to wait for this Ethereum ETF. It's actually coming out in a day or two, friends. So end of Tuesday for Americana lands. Shout out to everybody in Americana, North and South Americana, and the East and the West too. So uh, once it finally does come out, we'll get to see, is this cycle going to be one of the most obvious low level thinking type of cycles where it's like, oh, we just have to wait for the ETF and then everything just went up. That's what happened with Bitcoin. We always thought it's gonna be four dimensional chess. You know, that's the thing with markets, friends. Sometimes when there's a lot of, uh, it, it, it's always a moving target, right? So in markets, when people get screwed so many times, uh, they stop getting the whole, the deep level difficulty in markets. It becomes like, it, sh it shifts the other way to become like low level pleb type of a, uh, of a of, uh, mindset required to win. What's low level pep mindset? It might just be the obvious things. It's like, oh, the crypto, uh, the president likes crypto now. Let's get long. Whoop. You know what I mean? Like, oh, no, he's talking about Bitcoin now. Let's get long. Like, it might be something like that. Oh, now there's an Ethereum ETF. Okay, let's get long. Maybe that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. Now, the big final alt season wave hasn't even started. This is the Bitcoin dominance chart. It's still moving around here. I mean, it really it does feel like it's on its last legs. But I want to tell you this as well, friends. This is, I'll never forgive the market. I'll never forgive everybody for what they did here. This was the most disgusting thing I'd ever seen in my life. Witness, sitting through this, I'm not joking, one of the worst experiences ever. It was literally just Bitcoin goes up forever, nothing else moves. And it really, truly was disgusting. And then this move was a terrible old season by comparison, if you look at the whole index. This whole move was three coins, three out of 100 coins. It was Doge. It was actually SHIB appearing. Oh, well, so Doge, SHIB, all right, two meme coins, useless meme coins. That was funny. Um, you also had Corridanzo and pretty much BNB. Yes, that's, that's most of the big moves. That was, that, was, that was the cause of that Bitcoin dominance uh, destruction there, which is what you want, right? You want Bitcoin to lose dominance because you want people to take on more risk. So is that going to happen again? I guess we'll see. But yes, I'll ne never forgive that. I remember so many people like just so depressed. And you know what? It didn't even make up for it in most of the parts. There's survivorship bias. So if you go and look at the whole index, I've made many, many videos and data and all these bull, uh, data points for everyone to show you that if you go back exactly four years ago, you pick any of the coins in the top 100, friends, literally one in eight did well. So literally you have like, that's just, okay, let's round it up, 15%. You got a 15% chance back then of picking a coin that did well. What's a coin that did well? It did like, a decent multiplier on top of Ethereum. All right, it didn't just match Ethereum. All right, but now let's look at these hundred coins. By the way, you can see Super Trump and all these other probably probably Trump coins are um, going to move up now. Look at all these top one hundred coins. Let's actually go to rank hundred. 
that's near 850 million market cap. So anything around a billion, right, friends, I'm not joking, you're playing with fire. You're literally playing with fire, all right? Now, obviously, yes, chain link and stuff, they are here, friends, of course. Doesn't mean, like, never touch them. I'm just telling you, like, don't think... That's gonna be your ticket, and because everyone, everyone in Chainlink, they know, we know it's a piece of crap. We know it's slow. We know it moves the index. We know, okay, you need real world assets as a cycle one narrative to come boost you. But that's just Chainlink, man. There's so many others as well, friends. Just be careful, man. I'm telling you now, because you've been warned. You've been warned. All right. We went back four years ago. Uh, look, if you go back four years before that, so if you go back to 2017, uh, if you go back to 2017, I'll show you the chart here. Remember 2017, friends, the greatest cycle ever, the huddle cycle. We're in 2017. Out of the top 100, there were only 200 coins. So literally, you picked any coin. There were only 200 to choose from. They all went nuts. All of them did like uh, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100x. All of them. Now, if you went back exactly to that right before that moment, they all did amazing. They all did amazing. Why? Because they were linked to Bitcoin and Ethereum. Right? So they all matched around BTC. You know, BTC from four years ago, just to show you, right? BTC, friends, was $4,000 from eight years ago, around here. So, so it's $1,000. So Bitcoin to the very, very top, Bitcoin did like a 13X. So all these altcoins, they all did a three to four X multiplier on that. So they all did 40, 50, 60 from four years ago. By the way, that's not buying in the bear market. That's buying after the Bitcoin halvening, where we are right now, where you're in that momentum play. That was 2017 cycle. That's how easy it was. Then you had XRP that did like a 500X for the whole year. But that's an anomaly, right? That's like super unicorn. So that was the, that was the uh, how how easy it was back in the huddle cycle. Now, if you go to the wag the diamond hands wag me cycle, if you go back here, right, friends, you don't get your 40, 50, 60, 70 x. Okay, you don't get there at all. All you get is literally you get way, way, way less. So instead of it's actually you're getting like a 60 up there, you're getting only around the 12. You only got around the 12. Why? Because Ethereum did 12. So that was disgusting, right? That was, that was very, very, very disgusting. That, that's why everybody got destroyed. It only comes up, barely pings like, you know, 8, 9, 10x, and then back down 70%. So it's it's not like it goes to 12x, to 10 to 12x, and it stays there for like months for you to think about whether you should exit. No, no, no. You have to sit through absolute abomination scams like this. Look at this. Look at, look at Chainlink, taps it. Friends, literally 14 days later, you are down 70% and it never comes back. Can you believe that? I'm just gonna. I mean, that's just, that. That is this. That's so sad. We got so robbed, man. Like, if you just do look at that. If you do, if you were on side a 12x, okay, he taps 12x. 14 days later, you are only on side 3.6x, and it never comes back. You're done for the whole cycle. Four years gone. See, this? that's exactly what happened here. Isn't that disgusting, man? That that was most of the old coins, man. That's why I'm here to tell you it, that diminished hard, right? And you got to say to me, well, uh, you probably think. Uh, the cycle's different, man. You had infinite QE, 0% rates. You had Dogecoin, man. You had Elon Musk shilling. So it's just to tell you, man, like the, we're all trading mindshare and we had a, we have a limited number of currency units. We do. There's a certain growth rate that comes in, of course, but it's a limited number of currency units and it can't go to every coin. So you have to pick the winning coins. Which ones are the most fun, the most exciting? What are people looking at? There aren't enough currency units to go around there. There's not enough money to go through. That's that's it. That's pretty much what we have to just, you basically have to deal with that fact. There's not 200 coins anymore like it was in 2017. Now there is 20,000 a day being minted. Right? And we know all the Soilana pump.fun ones are scams, but even if you remove the pump.fun, right, or that trash city, the Jeet city, even if you remove them, there is still over 20,000. Still. Okay, so you don't have 200 anymore, you have 20,000. That's why it's, it's uh, it, it really does require a different skill set. Now you have to, we have to work harder. You know, that's why, I've, remember, friends, I made my ultimate bull market strategy guide. Talked about one, you got to go on chain. Big advantage, okay? Number two, next one, you need an active community. Big, big, big advantage, right? The more active, the better. And then number three, you need an information asymmetry. You need something, right? Maybe I'm a fluffy microphone owner and I like the coin. Maybe you know other people. Maybe you're making fan pages. Maybe you're just like, you know, expanding stuff. You need some sort of information asymmetry, which gives you an edge over the average market to tell you, okay, this growth rate is not going to be one of the ones that did get ignored in the bull market, all right? Number four, the final key point is developers, but you don't have developers for everything. The devs, that's, that is, is one advantage potential, but it depends more on the chain and stuff. Like for example, Coinbase has one of the biggest uh, dev counts as well. That's why a lot of people are centering around Coinbase, playing for the bull market, okay? So we've gone through all this other stuff. That's how you process all of these moving forward. Now, baby dolls, as we are witnessing, let's play some nice. Let's play some nice Pika friends, Pika music. We need this, all right? 
We're witnessing Joey Biden. He's just dropped out. Now, look how the deep set, look how the inner workings work, friends. Um, they told us he wasn't going to do it. They told us he was set to f finish the term. You know that, right? So first they say he's dropping out. They get everybody out there. Then he releases a statement saying, I intend to finish the job. So it doesn't look like it's all orchestrated. And then he's out anyway. So, friends, they are one. They are the best manipulators in the world. They know exactly how to do things. They're like, hey, tell them we're doing it and then pull back and then tell them and then pull back and then finally do it. So they're prepared. That's what it comes out of. They, they never want to shock people. That's what all, that's that's government control. You never want to shock them. You want to let them know what's coming, even if what they what's coming is manipulation. So Uncle Joey Biden has officially, he has endorsed Kamala Harris. Now, friends, I've seen her. She was basically, I think she was basically pimping out with P. Diddy. And so, I'm not even joking. There are videos of her. She was literally pimping out. She was, she was having threesomes with rappers. She was always like the wing girl. Maybe she did a good job back then as well, you know. Maybe maybe more people would vote for her if they knew about her past like that. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? That'd be funny. Yeah. Like, it's just a, imagine pimped out her in the White House. That'd be funny. Now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to. Hey, hey, hey. Simulation riders. Okay. I like funny stuff. I don't know if I want to deal with that. You know what I mean? Like throw some pro crypto statements out first. You know what I mean? I want I want a hoe in the White House, but I want to be a pro crypto hoe. All right. So he's officially endorsing her. And I want to let you guys be aware of this. She has worse ratings than Joe. So if you think it was going to be a landslide before, now you think it's a triple landslide. But you never know. Maybe there's a bit of a poisoning act car bombs. You don't know what the hell is Deep State's going to do, man, when it comes to Donald Trump. Maybe they have more plans. We'll go through that more later on. Also, friends, I'm going to throw you back to this Soilana ETH ratio, friends. Soilana ETH ratio is actually strong. So it's still staying in this channel, okay? Soilana ETH ratio. Now, I don't know how far it could go up because it just seems like it's like everyone already is aware of the Soilana meme coins and all these other things. But Ethereum is still in poopy times and we're waiting for, you know, that next step. We're waiting for that Ethereum ETF. And, you know, it will be funny if it does knee-jerk react. But remember, Ethereum is also the barometer of risk. It doesn't mean, okay, everything's Ethereum central. We really might, friends, we really might see an altcoin renaissance around everything out there. Because Ethereum, and here's the thing, Ethereum is not even expensive to use now. It's really, really, really cheap. So what's going on? Well, what's going on is basically... Unfortunately, all the VC friends, all the VCs, they made a lot of tech stuff, but their tech's too expensive. So we're like, hey, your tech's really cool. I would buy it for 40 million market cap. I would, because that's what all the prices were four years ago. They don't let me and you in at 40 million market cap. They have their own insider private round ICO deals hooked up with exchanges. And then when they launch it, it's two and a half billion. So your 50X is already taken from you. They've already given it to themselves and they start with the 50X on day one. So they don't, friends, they don't, they don't even care about growing. They don't care about growing. They just need the price to go sideways to dump all their unlocks over time. They don't need it to grow. They don't need it to grow. They don't, you can tell, where are the memes? We're not meme coins. Where are the actual memes? Where are the community with all these, okay? It's just, it's literally just a bunch of just, I hate to say, just a bunch of airdrop farming jeets on all these other chains who are just pretending they're just like posturing like, oh, wow, I really love this chain. Like, let me in just to like adopt the tokens, man. So we don't know what's going to happen next. Is someone going to make some new tech innovation thing? I guess we'll see. All right. And, and look, one of my theories, not theories, one of my like guesses last year was uh, it's a potential scenario. If crypto goes up heaps in this cycle, but we haven't made what I consider a, a technological innovation that leaps us forward enough, it will be running on fumes. It would be running on fumes. And that will, be, it will be, actually make it easier to click sell for the, for the when, when Bitcoin and Ethereum top out. Because you're like, wait, we didn't do anything. We just got more money into the ETF. We didn't actually innovate. We didn't develop more stuff. We didn't make another Uniswap. We didn't make another Ethereum. You see, we didn't actually do much. We just like make some user experience and stuff. A lot of low hanging fruit is gone. Does it really justify these valuations? When you're starting to think like that, it makes it easier for you not to be euphorically buying on leverage at the top. And that's actually the most important thing you need to navigate. Now back to some also crazy news fans. Uh, Reddit is in panic mode because Joe Biden dropped out. Biden is to stand down in re-election. Promise and now his hubris has made a mess of things. We're effed. I need to go get my uterus removed while I still have some bodily autonomy left. I refuse to let live in this effing handmaid's tale. Like, here's the thing, man. <laughs> you got to get your uterus removed. Oh, like, 
it's Reddit. You know what I mean? If, if it was Twitter, I'd be like, okay, you're funny. You're, you're joking. It was Reddit. Like, oh, okay. Oh, man. And by the way, look at everyone replying. I had mine removed last month, just in the nick of time. Minus one, minus one. So there's a person who screenshotted it. So, man, that's, just, that's hilarious. We also saw Elon Musk has added laser eyes to his Twitter profile. Is that the, is, friends, is, is this blue laser eyes? Is that Ethereum laser eyes because the Ethereum ETF is coming? Or does, does anybody know? I guess we'll just, I guess we'll find out. I hope it's not another top signal, but it's not. Just remember, friends, top signals get unlocked at new price levels. So there are going to be new top signals at 5 trillion and 10 trillion in market cap for the whole industry that uh, are not present today at 2 trillion. And our 2 to 3 trillion top signals, they were not present in 2017 when we hit um, 700 billion. Okay, so that's that's, that's what's what, what it comes down to is just looking at these price levels unlocking these uh, top signals. It's going to be fun. Now, check this out as well, friends. So this is Laza Fink from Roca Negra. Relationship between Laza Fink and Donald Trump might have Fink in running for Treasury Secretary. So remember, friends, uh, Roca Negra, is the, how much is the... The Bitcoin spot ETF collected right now. How much? How many Bitcoin? It's 887,000. So it is an enormous amount. It's about 4% of the supply of Bitcoin. That's a big wallet, right? It's 4% of supply. And that might just be the government wallet now. That's that's one of my, you know, one of my potential scenarios later on. If the Fed de fiat debt crisis, you know, it accelerates too hard later on, somewhere deep in the future, not anytime soon. They always find a way to kick the can down the road. If it accelerates, yeah, you do. You they can do the old switcheroo where they give everybody fiat. They take the Bitcoin, they keep it on the treasury, and then they use that to square some stuff. Maybe US US dollar dominance is slowly dropping down over time. I guess we'll see. But maybe, friends, that's a story for the twenty thirty to twenty forty decade. Remember, Laza Fink is very very pro crypto, but not pro crypto for the way everybody thinks. It's Trojan horse pro crypto. It's like ah, this really is changing the world. You guys are all gonna buy it, so. I'm going to buy it here on your behalf. And then when I actually want to, when all of you need it, I'm going to own it. All right. That's the, uh, that's the uh, perspective it is. By the way, uh, Roca Negra is the unofficial, the black wallet of the US government. So we already know, right? They're buying all the real estate. They're buying stocks. They're controlling the stocks and the companies come in. Obviously, they're buying Bitcoin now. Friends, that's what happens at the end of a fiat debt system. So think about this. If you had a system and you have the money printer and it's going to die... What would you do at the very, very end? Oh, wouldn't you do things like keep printing money, give yourself the currency units, and then go buy up the scarce assets before the currency goes to zero? Oh, isn't that exactly what's been happening? They're buying up all the land in, in America, and they're doing all the, they're accumulating all this stuff more and more and more and more and more. So they're, they're running it back. Uh, they're running the scenario out. It's just it's happening quite slowly, but sometimes it's periods of acceleration. I guess we'll see how it plays out. Now, friends, when I, I saw this news, I, I've got to, I've got to, please, 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 please warn all of you, please. So, firstly, do not click around to any new websites. All right, every new website I'm not used to. That's it. It's a scam. Assume it's a scam. On top of that, all right, do not do what Greg Foss just did. Okay, Greg Foss unfortunately lost six hundred and fifty Bitcoin because he invested in a scam Bitcoin mining company. Now, this breaks my heart because if, if you remember who Greg Foss is, it's this guy and he snaps at Udi and Eric Wall. You go, man. Fuck Thank you, you guys, you're fucking not doing the work. God fucking damn it, that Bitcoin magazine was a fucking farce. Two fucking idiot wizards on stage. This is not a fucking joke, people. Fucking idiots, okay? So he's talking about Eric Wall, friends. This is this is this is Greg Foss. Insane. If you don't, you're a fucking loser, sir. Please send this directly to Ray Dalio's email. You are a shameful fucking loser. Sorry, I can't. This is awesome. Why was he saying this? Look at this. It was the bottom of Bitcoin. So he's talking about who's like Ray, uh, Ray Dalio. So have have a listen again. Do you have the backbone to do the same? So he's talking about Ray Dalio and it's fun. So Greg, Greg is a Bitcoin maxi, friends, like very, very deep Bitcoin maxi as well. But he was a bond trader and very experienced. Oh, I can't even believe I'm saying it, man. How? The, this just fucking hurts. Okay. Oh, my God, bro. Why? Oh, you know what? I'm not going to say it. Just uh, 650 Bitcoin. Okay. So I had to find this out from other Twitter people. So Greg, friends, 
the story is just also a more religious, spiritual aspect of Bitcoin. He's going through like depression as well. So he made a lot of money, bond trader, understands risk a lot. He's got like very high Bitcoin targets, understands really smart ways of like math and probabilities and all these other stuff and calculates, you know, the fiat, debt, debt treasury. And like, oh, Bitcoin's got to go to a million dollars because, or like 2.8 million because here's the ratios of all these things to the balance sheets. Well, um, Bitcoin helped him through his depression. He got he got welcomed into the Bitcoin maxi community. Of course, man, of course, like welcome to crypto. Um, I don't mind that you want all the altcoins to go to zero. Oh, it is what it's okay. Everyone's fighting sometimes. But then uh, he comes in and somehow, somehow, he's a master of risk. And just look at this. What happened to Greg Foss is an example of what you will keep happening on a Bitcoin standard. If you deploy your Bitcoin, this is corn, to get any kind of yield, you alone will enjoy the gains if it goes well, and you alone will suffer the consequences if it goes south. So what platform did he lose it on? Some power company, I don't know the details, yet to be confirmed whether he actually lost 650 Bitcoin or he lost fiat denominated in 650 Bitcoin as of today. Big difference, okay? So is it a big difference? Not really, I mean, you just go in and buy it. But yeah, how much is 650 Bitcoin for? I don't know how I want to do this number. Oh, damn, man. $44 million. All right. Oh, my God. All right. How? Bro. Okay, so, friends, don't do this ever, ever, ever. Mining in crypto, it's all a scam. It's all a scam. Okay, now, scam I'm using loosely. It's a scam. That's it. It's a scam, friends. It's a freaking scam. You understand? It's a scam. It's like, okay, someone's selling $900 perfume and they say if you wear it, all the ladies are going to bang you. Yeah, it's a scam. Okay. Yeah, the perfume smells nice. Yes, technically, you could go wear it before you go bang your girlfriend. Yeah, see, the ladies did bang me. Okay, technically, yes. But no, technically, it's $900 being taken away from you. Also, you're getting scammed. All right, see what I mean? Uh, with Greg Foss, 44 million bucks. He gave his Bitcoin out to a Bitcoin mining company and it's to earn yield. Now, obviously, once you hear yield, you think, wait a minute, I know a guy named Richard Hart who made Hex for this exact reason. Yes, it's actually true, friends. That's why Hex is a better Bitcoin. Hex is a better Bitcoin. Okay, that's literally, he, he made it for this reason. I remember this is Richard Hart's original talking moments. He's like, all these Bitcoin guys, you're all getting scammed because you're handing your Bitcoin out to third-party platforms, and then you end up losing all the money. And then, yes, so that brings us, I guess, to Pulse Chain. How are you doing? It's still trying to reverse off that floor, friends. It's a weekly chart. It's gonna take a while. As well, Hex has to come down. It's gotta, it's gotta do a lot, lot, lot more things. I mean, we gotta get this thing at least. You gotta get back above five cents to do something, which is quite a while away. It's like an eight X away, six to seven X away, actually. So here's Hex. So yes, one of the reasons why Hex was invented to solve these things. But <clears throat> is it more of the reason why people want to participate, or is it just icing on the cake? I guess we'll find out. And yes, friends, you you just you never want to be in this situation where you're losing 650 Bitcoin because you shouldn't be giving it it out. It's a store of value, friends. It's a store of value. It's literally it's like gold. Like like imagine, friends. Imagine someone said, "Hey, how much gold?" You ask you how much gold you have. You go, oh, "I've got a hundred thousand dollars worth of gold." Okay, sweet, whatever it is. So you got fifty ounces. All right. Well, do you want to earn yield on it? I can give you three percent per year, but I need to transport your gold across the sea. All year, you're 24, 24 hours a day, your gold is being transported from country to country through tornadoes, through all these other stuff, and in, in all these other storms in the middle of the ocean. Just and you're getting you're getting yield a year. So yeah, man, there might be a few years you get your nice three percent per year, but it's just you can't sleep at night, man. So, so yeah, that's why friends, everybody hunts yield. Everyone hunts yield. Everyone wants to borrow more. We want to always up the ante. Always. That's why. I introduce concepts to you like 90% call 10% lottery because if you're going after these lottery ticket stuff, that's your yield. That's your yield. And you're buying spot tokens. One, you can't be forced out. And two, we're in on-chain world with the information asymmetry in active communities where your yield spike can be huge in the right times. Okay, But you can't obviously do it all the time. Like You can't be holding throughout a bear market. So I really do hope Greggy Boo gets back his Bitcoin man because like he's a, he's a fierce warrior for Bitcoin and the, the crypto army. Now... Believe, friends, believe. Look at this. I sold all my BNB at 200 bucks. Now I buy back at $700. Buy high, sell low, June 5th. So that was abs that's an absolutely amazing uh, coin fashions to read. And I'm going to show you the chart of BNB right now. What did he do? He sold 200 bucks. Oh my gosh. He literally sold. 
Where so he sold two hundred dollars here or here around here. He sold this was this was lunar collapse stuff, and then this was the CZ fud. And look what it did. Whoop went up. So there you go, fancy. He's sending down here, man. Because look, we were all here, man. All even all the Bitcoin maxis, friends. They were all here. They said there is nothing but pocket and air here. They think, oh well, these levels. It's going all the way down. By the way, this is an enormous move. If you want to see how how low from the low this is going, they say, oh, you're gonna lose half your money again. You're going to lose another 6 70%. So it's going to be down like 90%. But BNB rotated up. Now, why did why did Binance do this chart and go up? Well, no expectations, right? They're obviously rotating profits from the exchange to keep the token bid. And that's what you want. They're doing they're doing buybacks with like a lot of money. Remember, Binance is one of the most profitable companies in the world, friends. Like that's how profitable they are, right? Big 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 advantage and competitive advantage out here. But not every coin can do this, okay? Not every coin can do this at all. They don't have the volume. They don't have the money. They don't have the ability to, uh, to fund coins like this and keep these things bid over time. But Binance does. Does that mean buy it in the next bear market? No, it's centralized, man. It doesn't necessarily mean that. Like, you don't know. What if they start losing their edge? They have a lot of money, though. They, they, could, they could literally keep pumping this thing up. They're making billions. They're make, literally making billions. And their money, friends, is other coins, just to let you know. So they're making money. Yeah, there is USDT collection as well. But yeah, a lot of the money is trading between coins and you're paying a fee in each of that coin. So they'll dump that coin and they're just rotating into the BNB over time. But I remember uh, CZ once, Chang Peng, he said he doesn't want BNB to beat Bitcoin. He just wants it to slowly, steadily gain and give people a nice premium. It's kind of funny. It just shows you the manipulation because he, does, he doesn't want to embarrass Bitcoin. Because it's just like, you know, Chinese guys, like all about face, right? It's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to be competitive. I don't want to be competition. I don't want confrontation. It's kind of funny, interesting how that culture thing works out. But BNB, what a rocket of a coin. And the most important part of all of that, friends, is that selling low, buying high part. You really got to believe, man. That's it. You really got to believe. There's no like, oh, buy back in later. So we'll see. Now, there's heaps of altcoins all over Ethereum land, Solana land, Pulse Chain land, his dick with butt. You can change to the pulse ratio just so you can see if it's, it's everything is still in the same area. It's down 50, 60, 70%. We also saw Pika around here doing this little move. Here, here you it go. It's 20% off that top. So I think we just we just need more people coming in. Market's trying to price a lot of these things in. And then you even have communities like, for example, Landwolf. Okay, Landwolf, so you put on a log chart. You just say, wow, everything looks good on a log chart. So Landoff as well, doing this sideways range as well. It's down to four or five minute market cap. Same as everything else, man. Uh, the community is only getting stronger. People are only recruiting more. And we're still waiting, man. Hey, is someone going to show us a new level of Uniswap tech? Is there anything coming out yet? A lot of the VCs are trying to force it, but nothing's coming out right. They, they are trying to force it, trying to force all these other things. Oh, look at this social finance, all these other things coming out. Yeah, but people aren't really using them as much. What, what's actually taking everyone's attention is, this big fat Bitcoin orange bull. All right. You also have Bitcoin hitting 68K, Joey Biden stepping down, and even Joe Burden coin dropping as well. So you have like these little, you have market behaviors and stuff going, going on, but everybody's focus is still, it still seems to be, man. They're like, okay, wait for the speed, Bitty coin. Then let's go allocate into our lotteries, which is altcoins, which is, okay, meme coins are this cycle's altcoins, which is just things that go up. So until that changes, man, there's nothing to do. Everybody thought it's going to change a lot, but you just got to be careful, friends. You can't just buy anything. Look at Kamala Harris's coin. She spiked up 5X when he endorsed her, and then she dropped back down. So it just, it just seems like everything they do, man, just has no legs. Just every, everything the Democrats do, man, is, it, and it's, it's, it's kind of like if you just looked at the charts of the Democrat coins versus the Republican coins in crypto, you could tell that, re that Republicans are going to win. You could just tell that because all the Democrat coins – they're all pump and dumps. They don't have any sustained buyers. It's people just trying to front run greater fools. But in the Trump coins, people truly believe. And like all the Trump, all the MAGA coins and stuff out here. So this is Orange Man Good, for example. You could change it on a pulse ratio pricing. So it's still in these zone, friends, back into this zone. Still got to rinse, I guess, rinse out sideways. It needs more time. Most of these things, friends, will get unlocked. Most of the prices we desire, they'll only get unlocked once you have the real expansion, right? So we need Ethereum to expand above this $4,850 mark. And just for a check, we can look at the Russell. So this is Mr. Russell. Did its like little 
reversal thing now. But yes, so that's what we need to avoid. I guess not. It's like outside of our control. But last thing we want to see is Mr. Russell do that. We're like, ah, oh, crap. Okay, we would do that. So we just need him to just keep doing wee, 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 and then pop up eventually. Because remember, that's what it does. That's what it does. It usually goes up, does these retraces, and continues. And here is just some final message, friends. This is Peppy holding Wojak's voice. So let's just give you this nice piece of friendship here. So don't sell your bags until Bitcoin prints three green yearly candles in a row. That's literally been... The formula the whole time. If you're selling before them, like you sell everything, right? Of course, you can trim profit and stuff. You can do what you want, but not financial advice. Uh, if you're selling anything before that, though, in big, big, big chunks, you're pretty much going the way of the soy drinker because we, we've been building up to this moment. Remember, friends, it all calms down. Three yearly candles is the dangerous one, all right? Because green candle one... Is like, okay, if it starts a green candle, that's out of a bear market, okay? That's what we just had. The second green year, which is what we are now, Bitcoin halvening year, that's like, oh, it could have gone either way. We could have ended down. We could have had things bad. We might still crash. We don't know. All right, we're still on our toes. But the third green year in a row, just telling you, traditionally in crypto, that is what attracts the weak hands because... It's not just three years because three years is nothing in the stonk market. But three years, remember, we are living three cycles a day. And we have weekends. We don't stop on Saturdays and Sundays. We continue. So in a month, friends, in a month, there's normally 20 trading days for stonk world. But in crypto, it is 30 times three. It is 90 days. Right? So instead of 20 trading days... We have 90 in crypto because you have, you have Asia session, Europe session, US session, right? So there's, there's three sessions going on all the time and they're running 24 seven. So compare 20 to 90. So literally we are like a, a we're running four to five times faster uh, than stonks. So that's, that's how you can kind of gauge that if, if we've had three green years in crypto, it's equivalent to 12 years in the stonk market of going up. And you can actually draw this on a chart. This is the Bitcoin price chart. What I've done is I put it on a log chart here. Those horizontals, they're just uh, Bitcoin halvening years. So you can see as well. So you can see, so you had, this is the anomaly, right? This is Bitcoin, you can't even count it. It's like four green years. But then look what happens after this. You have three green years, right? The third green year, this is 2017, dangerous. Three green years again. Okay, third green year was J January. This is 2021. Okay, dangerous. Now we are in the second, right? One and two. This is exactly what I've described. The first green year is right after the bear market. That was the risky one. That's like last year. You felt like, oh, I could go down. Now this year's like, hey, I'm starting to feel it. The next year is the dangerous one. Now, you want to know what's funny, man? We all knew 2021 was going to be a dangerous year. We all knew that. The problem, though, was the prices. And that's what I'm ultimately going to leave you with today. Everyone knows something is dangerous. Everybody knows. It's just that why don't people exit? It's because they're not happy with the price. Some say greed. That's why you have a friend here named your friend Sami. He's been telling you, you got to go way, way harder, man. Bear market, I don't care if your coins are crumbling to zero. Good. If you want to win, you got to go way, 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 way harder. Because you don't know what type of disappointment is laying around the corner. Remember, markets are always... Friends. Markets never truly hit that peak of euphoria 99.99% of the time. They never truly actually hit that. They give you the dopamine amount that you're going to hit that, but they never actually reach that target. And then if you do get there, they raise the target again anyway, okay? So you just get to see it plays out in real time. So if we have a green 2025, it will be, I think, enough momentum to be like... Let's say you like... Let's say we're in August of next year and it's like green that might be the top but everybody will be just so like believing like you know what we're not going to go down too many things are going good right but it's, it's just so strange friends because we're all so skeptical man everyone go check the comments not just my baby dolls all of you in the comment section that you like and subscribe to um Check around everywhere. Everyone knows four-year cycle. Everyone knows, oh, yeah, i got to sell the year after the Bitcoin halvening. Everyone knows that. So how do they react in crypto when they know that? How do they react? 
Okay, how do, if you want to ask me, okay, of course, you can go either two ways. Either we are blessed up with the divine intervention bull market where we smash up again. That could happen. But there is another world where we don't get as euphoric as we used to be. We don't get as euphoric and then we don't drop as much. Now, not dropping as much is still painful, friends, because like dropping 70% in altcoins instead of 95%. Yeah, I mean, if dropping 70 to 80%, that's still painful, but it's not a 99% wipeout, but everyone's going to be exiting there because if when you're down 70 to 80%, everyone's going to think, oh my God, the bear market's here, we're all dropping 99%. So I've just, um, we're always prepared for this scenario because ultimately to make it at the end of the game, you have to believe. And if you, you really got to think always, who is in long with me? I've told you how many times, if I don't see enough non-believers with us, there's nothing to be concerned about. They're not in with us now. The non-believers are not here. But maybe when Bitcoin is printing that third green yearly candle, maybe they come in. I guess we'll see what price that's going to be at. Is it Bitcoin over 100 grand? We'll see. Make sure you like, subscribe, belly button, or catch you in the next one.